What's going on everybody, it's ETA Prime back here again. Today we're going to be taking a look at some lossless scaling and frame generation on the Steam Deck OLED. Keep in mind this will also work on the LCD Steam Deck. But there's one major caveat here, this is only working in Windows right now, and recently Steam put out some new drivers for Windows 11 on the Steam Deck OLED. I recently created a video showing off Windows 11 performance on this device, and since then I've had a lot of people asking about lossless scaling. And if you're not familiar with lossless scaling, basically it's an application that you can buy from Steam, and it'll allow you to use frame generation and upscaling on basically any backend, any game, any system as long as it's running Windows. With these lower end IG GPU devices. I found with most of them, we're seeing a pretty nice jump in performance. And if you take a look at our FPS counter up top, you'll notice we've actually got two listed. The first one is our original FPS. That's what the Steam Deck can do on its own. The second one is with the generated frames. So on average, we're seeing around 47 on the Steam Deck all by itself, but with lossless scaling enabled and some frame generation, we're up in the 90s with it. We've basically doubled the frame rate of Red Dead 2, and you can see we're still only running at 15 watts here on the Steam Deck. In this video, I'm going to show you how it works, and then we're going to test out a few more games. I'm going to go ahead and plug my Steam Deck into my game capture so we can get a better look at everything, but then we'll move back over to the built-in screen in just a bit. Many of you might have already heard the news, but Valve has recently given us updated Windows drivers for the Steam Deck OLED, and this is exactly how we're going to get lossless scaling working. Unfortunately, it's just not working in Linux, but as you can see here, we've got that custom APU for the Steam Deck OLED, and of course the custom AMD iGPU. I've dedicated 4 gigs of VRAM from the BIOS here, and we've got lossless scaling installed. This is seven bucks over on Steam, but if you can utilize it, it's well worth the money. And I've been doing a lot of testing with the ROG Ally, Ally X, a couple iNeo devices with uh, AMD iGPUs. This can really help out. I'm gonna jump right in here to Cyberpunk 2077. I'm gonna show you how to use lossless scaling on the Steam Deck. Since I'm plugged into a monitor with the Steam Deck, I've got the overall resolution actually set to 900p. We've got Cyberpunk 2077 all low settings, FSR is at performance. And when I say all low, I mean everything is turned down as low as it can go. 720p, borderless. This is the only way we can get that scaling working with lossless scaling. I've got Afterburner running in the top left hand corner there. And right at the end, you can see I've got it named old FPS. And that's because once we enable frame generation with lossless scaling, Afterburner's just not going to be able to pick up those extra frames that are generated. But lossless scaling does have a built-in FPS counter, so we will enable that. Overall, with no frame generation, no scaling, this is actually working much better than I thought it would. I'd say we're seeing an average of around 51 FPS with Cyberpunk 2077 at 720p, but we're about to get a lot more out of it. I need to break away from the game. We've got lossless scaling right here installed. So again, this is seven bucks from Steam. And when I'm using this on the built-in screen, I usually don't use any kind of scaling unless I really need to take that resolution down with the game under 800p because obviously that's the resolution of the Steam Deck OLED's display. But since we're on a bigger monitor at 900p, I will enable this. And for scaling mode, I usually just leave this at auto, full screen, and scaling type. We can actually choose between a few different scalers here. But the main two that I use are FSR and LS1. This is lossless scaling's built-in scaler, and I do think it looks a lot better. Next thing we want to do here is enable frame generation. LSFG 2.3. We've also got LSFG 1.1. You can, you can experiment with these, but I've been using the latest version. From mode, we've got a 2x, 3x, and a 4x. On higher end systems, you can get 4x the FPS, but I'm going to leave this at 2 because we are working with a low end iGPU. I leave performance mode on, moving down, rendering, and if you hover over any of this, it's going to give you a breakdown on what's going on, but I'm using VSync, max frame latency. Now, this will introduce some more latency to your input. But if I'm looking to get better performance in a single player game, I do not mind whatsoever. I'm not going to take it up super high. I've left this at 3 for Cyberpunk 2077. And of course, we want to draw that FPS so we can see the old FPS and the new generated FPS. So I've got everything set up here. I'm going to scale, choose my window, give it a second. 
It just scaled it up from 720 to 900p, and I'm going to have to reload because I didn't know what was going on in the background there. I just had to reload my game real quick, but up in the top left hand corner, you'll notice we have two frame counters going. We've got the old FPS that's also going to be listed with Afterburner there, and we've got the generated FPS. So it's looking like right now about 45 FPS without frame generation, up to around 91 FPS with frame generation. And it's storing three frames ahead right now, so again, you will encounter a bit of latency. If you're using a mouse and keyboard, it's definitely noticeable, but if you're using a controller, like an external controller or even the built-in controller, you really can't notice it that much going up to three frames, at least in my opinion, in single player games. So yeah, even on the Steam Deck with lossless scaling installed, it's working much better than I thought it would. There are some games that have given me some weird issues, and I'd say the main issue here would be that it doesn't work in Linux yet. It would be really nice if this could be ported over to Steam OS, that way we don't have to install Windows. But until then, I did want to show off a few more games here with lossless scaling enabled. And the first one here is Hogwarts Legacy. This is one that gave me an issue. If you keep an eye on the hat my character has on right now, during quick movements, it really does glitch out, especially when doing 360s. So it kind of disappears for a second, and I guess it's just not being generated properly using lossless scaling. What it looks like to me is the generated frames are kind of missing that hat. I'm not exactly sure how the hat is rendered in this game, and just knowing that it's happening with this item here, I'm sure there's more throughout the game you'll run into issues with. On average, with the way I have the game set up right now, we're seeing around 34 FPS natively, but around 62 with lossless scaling and frame generation enabled. I thought this one was pretty impressive. With Elden Ring 720p low settings, on average we're seeing around 33 FPS, but with lossless scaling enabled, we're up to around 68 on average. And in tight quarters, this jumps up to around 85 FPS. I personally don't recommend using frame generation with fast paced games, but I did test it with Forza Horizon 5 and the results were pretty awesome. I was actually really surprised here. We're at 720p medium settings, no FSR, we're just using lossless. On the Steam Deck OLED with these settings inside of Windows, average of 43 FPS. Of course, we could actually take this up much higher with some FSR enabled but we're already working with such a low resolution, I didn't want to use any scaling here, and just with frame generation enabled using lossless scaling, we're seeing around 76 FPS. But I gotta say, the most impressive game that I've tested so far with lossless on the Steam Deck OLED is Red Dead Redemption 2. I hate the way that Red Dead 2 uses the slider bar for your settings, so I'm five clicks up from the lowest of the low, and at the lowest of the low, with FSR set to performance, the Steam Deck with Windows can come real close to locking this down at 60. But getting a little extra out of it, and we're still in favor performance zone, we can now get averages of around 86 FPS with lossless scaling enabled on this game. And it does feel really good in this wide open area here. I personally wouldn't mind putting some time in with this game using these same settings that I have here. So overall, lossless scaling is actually working pretty well on the Steam Deck OLED, but there are a lot of downsides, like the fact that you have to install Windows, and if that's your main go-to, be my guest. I mean, it's totally fine to install any operating system you want. For me, I'd much rather have SteamOS installed on here because I can just pick that thing up and go. Everything's right there, ready to go, easy access to all of my games. I personally love what Valve has done with the Steam Deck, but it would be really nice to see something like this, like frame generation, come over to the Steam Deck natively. One of the big claim to fames was system-wide FSR, so something like system-wide frame generation would be a real treat on the deck. But that's going to wrap it up for this one. If this is something you want to try, I'm going to leave links in the description to the lossless scaling app. Remember, you pick it up on Steam. I'll also leave links to Valve's official website with the newer Windows 11 drivers for the Steam Deck OLED. In the end, it's up to you. And one of the best things about an x86 platform like this is the fact that we can install operating systems on it. We're not locked down to just one OS on this unit. We're not renting it. We own this hardware, so we should be able to go ahead and install whatever we'd like. If you do end up trying this out, let me know in the comments how it goes for you. And like always, thanks for watching.